The Republic is written in a different style than the Gorgias. The Gorgias is written like a play, right? And so there are the names and then what they say to each other. The Republic's written more like a novel where the narrator is involved in the action of the novel. So in the Republic, you have uh, the, the narrator of the Republic saying, you know, and then I said, and then he said to me and blah, 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 whatever. The narrator is Socrates. And so when you're reading the Republic, he says, so then I said to Glaucon, you can't mean that. It's Socrates. So it's Socrates is kind of narrating this conversation that he'd had with um, a guy named Glaucon. Glaucon is actually Plato's brother. Uh, we're not going to worry so much about that. But in the Republic, uh, Socrates is talking to Glaucon and another guy named Adamantus, who's also Plato's brother. Uh, those are the main speakers in the Republic, and it's Socrates kind of lay uh, uh, detailing uh, in the first person this conversation he'd had with them. Now, <clears throat> Glaucon asked Socrates near the beginning of what we're reading. Glaucon asked Socrates about the good. What is good? Right. It's essentially, in in a certain way, the the a similar question is was being discussed in the Gorgias. They were discussing more particularly what a good life was. Uh, Glaucon asked Socrates, "What what is goodness? What is the nature of goodness? Can you give me an account of what goodness is?" Earlier in the Republic, Socrates had given Glaucon and Adamantus an account of the various virtues of justice, of courage, and so on. And Glaucon at this point now in what we're reading is saying, can you do the same thing for the good? Can you give me a kind of definition, an account, a theory of the good? And Socrates demurs. He says, no, I can't really do that. I, I don't really know. I can't. It's hard to say. Um, what I'll do instead, Socrates says, is give you a kind of metaphor, an allegory, an image. I can't really say much about the good in itself, but what I can try to do is illuminate it by giving you an analogy or an image, right? Something like that. That's what the image of the sun is supposed to do. It's supposed to tell us what the good is like, something about the form of the good, because the good, the nature of the good, that's ultimately going to be the form of the good, according to Plato. And so the image of the sun is supposed to tell us about the essence of goodness, about the form of the good. What Socrates does is he begins by talking not about the form of the good, not about things that you access with your mind and forms and so on. He begins by talking about vision. So the analogy is going to be that the form of the good, the thing that we're actually concerned with, is like the sun. And so he begins with... Um, vision. So he says, imagine you have the faculty or capacity for vision. That is to say, imagine you have somebody who can see, who's got eyes, you know, working eyes, functioning eyes. And imagine that person with the faculty of vision is put uh, in the vicinity of a visible object. So in this case, let's say a tree. Socrates asks, is there anything else that's needed? for sight to take place. You need someone with eyes, with the faculty of vision. You need a visible object, this tree. Is there anything else that's needed? And Socrates' answer is, well, yeah. If all you had were those two things, sight wouldn't take place. You need something to light up the visible object, right? You need the sun. Obviously, they didn't have light bulbs and things like that, right? So you need uh, light, basically. And the sun provides the medium through which visible objects can be seen by vision, right? And so you'll only have sight occurring if there is light to light up the visible object so that then vision can see the visible object. And so the sun, one of the crucial things that it does, and is going to be crucial for this analogy, it provides this medium through which visible objects can be seen. That's one thing the sun does. A second thing it does, 
according to Socrates. The sun is responsible for their being visible objects at all. And what he means by this is something different than what we've just been talking about. He's not saying, well, the sun is responsible for the objects being visible at all. That's not what he's saying. What he's saying is that the sun is responsible for the object existing in the first place. And so the idea, and Socrates doesn't spell this out, but the idea seems to be if the sun didn't exist, there would be no tree. It wouldn't even exist. Little, uh, and then obviously it couldn't be seen, right? It wouldn't even exist in the first place to even be seen if there were no sun. And so the sun is responsible for the very existence of all visible objects. It's responsible for their existence, and then it's responsible for their being seen in as much as it provides the medium through which they can be seen. So the sun do, does these two things. And what uh, Socrates says is that the form of the good works in an exactly similar way. But when we're, we're going to consider the form of the good and we're trying to figure out what it is, what we're concerned with is not vision, but intellect, our minds, right? And so our intellect is going to be analogous to vision. And when we're, when we're considering intellect, the mind, we're not concerned with visible objects. We're concerned with knowable objects. That is forms, intelligible objects, these forms, right? <clears throat> and we can ask a similar question as we asked in the case of uh, vis vision and visible objects. Is there anything else that's needed for an intellect to come to know, to grasp a knowable object, a form? And Socrates' answer is, yes, there is something else that's needed. You need the form of the good. The, the form of the good is like the sun. It's the, the form of the good is like the sun, but in the intelligible realm, the intelligible world. The form of the good provides the medium through which forms can be known by our minds. And if there were no form of the good, our minds couldn't grasp forms. And so the form of the, you know, so it couldn't grasp the form of tree. We couldn't understand the essence or nature of trees, the form of tree or the form of triangularity without the form of the good. The form of the good provides an intellectual light or an intellectual medium through which our minds can see, quote unquote, these forms. And without the form of the good, the form of tree, the form of triangle, the form of human being uh, would be uh, invisible to our minds. Our minds uh, would be in darkness. We wouldn't be able to grasp or understand these essences, these forms. But also, Plato says, the form of the good is like the sun insofar as the form of the good is responsible for their even being forms in the first place. So the form of the good kind of lights up the other forms and makes it so our minds can understand them. That's one thing the form of the good does, provides this intelligible light. But it's also responsible for the very existence of forms. Without the form of the good, there wouldn't even be a form of tree, right? And so it's exactly analogous to the sun. And the two main points of the analogy, both the sun and the form of the good provide a medium, provide a kind of light. Sun provides literal light, right? It provides the medium for sight. Whereas the form of the good provides a kind of intellectual light. It's what lightens up essences or forms so that our minds can understand them. Without it, our minds would be in darkness. We couldn't understand anything. We couldn't understand the essences of things. The second uh, analogy and analogous points that holds for the form of the good, uh, both the sun and the form of the good are responsible for the very existence of the things that they illuminate. 
So the sun is responsible for the very existence of visible objects. There wouldn't even be those objects without the sun. In the same way, the form of the good is responsible for the very existence of the forms. Without the form of the good, these other forms wouldn't exist. Now, Plato never spells out how exactly the form of the good is responsible or causes these other forms to exist in the same way that it never really spells out how the sun is responsible for the very existence of trees and other things that can be seen. But given what we know about uh, the kind of background to Plato's metaphysics <clears throat> that we uh, considered earlier, one thing that Plato seems to be indicating here, that Socrates seems to be indicating, is that the form of the good is responsible for the existence, not just of all forms, but for everything. Because the forms are responsible for the existence of the sensible things that participate in them, right? The reason that there is a tree is because there is something out there that participates in the form of tree. And if there were no form of tree, there would be no sensible, visible tree out there, right? These sensible, visible objects wouldn't exist if there were no forms. They get their being from the forms. And now Plato is saying here in this image of the sun that the forms themselves wouldn't exist without the form of the good. And so the form of the good is the supreme principle of all reality. It is responsible for the very existence of everything because it's responsible for the existence of forms, which are then in turn responsible for the existence of um, the, the, the sensible, perceivable things that constitute the sensible world. And so the form of the good is responsible for the existence of all the things in the intelligible world and then indirectly responsible for the existence of all the things in the sensible world. <clears throat>